bribery, now is the law of the land. Corporations can do what once was banned. The Supremes have set a precedent, now Walmart can be president. Coalition of groups and individuals coming together from across the country that are calling for a constitutional amendment to correct the court-created illegitimate idea that a corporation has inherent constitutional rights. You know, it didn't start with Citizens United, but the recent uh, outrageous Citizens United versus Federal Election Commission really brought to a head just what has happened to the Democratic Republic. However, the, the idea that concentrated capital that has been gotten privileges under law because of the creation of the, the corporation statutes for limited liability, which is an incredible privilege to have that human beings like us don't have, to then endow them with constitutional rights flies in the face of both logic and the principles upon which this republic was founded. Individual human beings are endowed by their creator with certain inherent and alienable rights. Concentrated capital does not have constitutional rights. They have privileges that are subject to the political process. But constitutional rights are not subject to the political process. Whether I agree with you or disagree with you, if you're a human being, I acknowledge and must acknowledge your worth as a human being and your constitutional rights. So the concept of, and I want to really underscore in my closing uh, moment, corporate personhood is merely a shorthand. The real issue is, do corporations have constitutional rights? And the answer clearly is no. This is something that we can actually agree on as Americans and their principles. It's not an issue. This is a constitutional principle. So I stand in support and request that you will join Flagstaff, Arizona, over 100 other communities across the country in what is a growing, peaceful movement to democratically take our country back. Thank you. I'm here representing the Tucson chapter of Progressive Democrats of America. Uh, reasonable people may disagree on the correctness of the Citizens United decision. George Will argued recently in the Arizona Daily Star that it was a correct decision. President Obama said in his State of the Union speech that the decision would, quote, open the floodgates for special interests to spend without limit in our elections. The Supreme Court has likewise been schizophrenic on this issue. After the Civil War, the court said for the first time that corporations, like people, have constitutional rights. The progressive era that followed uh, saw the first major efforts to limit the impact of money in politics. Since then, the sides of the battle have remained roughly the same. One side favors rules to limit the influence of money. The other has supported a freer market, allowing people and corporations to contribute as they see fit. Citizens United marked the most recent cycle in this contest. Even in an illegal system like ours that protects free speech, the government has long been able to regulate speech in all kinds of ways. As legal scholar Jeffrey Tubin writes in the May 21st edition of the New Yorker about Citizens United, quote, the real question for Chief Justice Roberts was how much he wanted to help the Republican Party. Well, Roberts' choice was a lot, close quote. Wow. It's not hard to see why this decision is so bad for our democracy. Corporate money increased over 300% in the 2010 midterm races. Poll after poll has shown that Americans oppose Citizens United by about four to one. More than 75% of voters believe that corporations have more control over our political system than average citizens do. Polls also show that this issue inspires If you could wrap up. I will. <laughs> Polls also show that this issue inspires not just disapproval, but a desire for serious action. Bipartisan, there's bipartisan support for amending the U.S. Constitution to affirm that corporations 
don't have the same rights as people. Tucson, you're the elected representative of Tucson. You have an opportunity to make Tucson's voice heard in this regard. And that's what I want to talk to you about here. Please vote for this resolution. It's important for the very continuation of our democracy. We can't have, uh, under Citizens United, what we're doing is putting the presidency up for auction. Yeah. What we need to do with this group, my friends here, we need to talk to candidates for Congress and candidates for the legislature and extract their promise to support this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we, shouldn't, we shouldn't be here at the city council, see? We go and take it into the congressional candidates and we say uh, yes or no, will you endorse and support this? And the ones who do, we have to drum up support for them, help them in our campaigns. And the ones who don't, we have to occupy every event that they speak at. That's the way you beat it out of them. It's not going to work this way, okay? So that's what we need to do. Uh, see what happened here, it, it's not that this is without harm. There's an election for Congress going on right now. The polls will close in a few minutes. Uh, Ron Barber and... Uh, what's the other Jesse Kelly. Jesse <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. uh, We don't, I don't know how they feel about this issue. And that's not excusable with this size of a group here that nobody went and asked either one of those guys how they feel. City Manager's communication number 248 dated June 12 was received into and made part of the record. Ms. Clerk, you are requested to read the memorial by title only. A memorial relating to election declaring support for an amendment to the United States Constitution to abolish corporate personhood and override the United States Supreme Court's decision in Citizens United versus the Federal Election Commission. Uh, what is the council's pleasure? Uh, you know, I, I, I understand the sentiment that this is a federal issue, uh, but feel strongly, as I know several colleagues do, that Tucson has a proud and strong legacy of protecting clean elections. We adopted a system in the 1980s. We strengthened it in 2007 by requiring independent committees to disclose their donor information at the same time frame that any candidate or other financial information is revealed so that there's transparency in terms of money flowing into elections. And last year we succeeded uh, in uh, partnership with the Arizona Advocacy Network in challenging the Arizona legislature's proposal to amend the Arizona Constitution in order to abolish the state's clean elections program. So this is all about Tucson. It is all about the values that we hold. And I appreciated how people helped to make it very clear this is not anti-corporations. This is pro-human rights, pro-constitution as it was intended. And really to make sure that constitutional rights protect the citizens and people of the United States and not legal constructs uh, that would extend beyond that. We have to take it seriously because court challenges to our own election system could stem from this. We could hear people say, we shouldn't have to disclose that we gave money to this campaign uh, because we have constitutional rights to privacy or an unmitigated right to free speech as an individual would. Uh, and so we have to, I think, take a strong position. Uh, so I'm proud to move that we pass the memorial and uh, hope we can uh, find a unanimous support. Second. Uh, let's move to roll call. Ms. Romero? Aye. Mr. Cunningham? Aye. Ms. Ulis? Aye. Mrs. Scott? Aye. Mr. Pembrose? Aye. Mr. Kazachi? Aye. Mayor Rostra? Aye. <laughs> Now is the thing.
they felt the past. Those with money own the elections at last. They buy all the TV at time and run their swift boat as sign. They'll offer no proof to hell with the truth. Corporations are persons too.